Let's talk about another kind of passive heat that you can use. Now, a lot of people call this earth battery, but it's, it's not really an earth battery. An earth battery, the way you see most people explain it, just the, the concept just doesn't work. But uh, a lot of people call this an earth battery, but it's not. It's what I would call geothermal. Now, geothermal is available just about anywhere. And uh, unless you live near uh, the north or south pole or an area, or you're close to an area where they have perm permafrost, uh, then you probably can't do this. But what I mean by geothermal is that just about anywhere, if you go down deep enough, you know, I'm talking six or eight feet, the ground temperature down there is, oh, 50 degrees or something like that. It depends on where you live, what it is. Now, this is low-grade geothermal. It's not like what you might think of, like the Yellowstone geysers and stuff like that, where you have really hot water and stuff, and things like that. It's not that. It's low-grade heat. What it means is that your, your ground temperature is about 50 degrees, but you've got to dig down deep for it. Now, there's an excellent example of a fellow who's done this in Nebraska, and it works very, very well, but it takes a lot of... Uh, it takes a lot of excavation, a lot of work to do it. And the principle of it is, is you can extract the heat down below the frost line if you have enough surface area. Now let me explain what I mean by that. This is geothermal heat extraction from places that are just normal places all around us. And what it really means is getting heat out of the ground in a normal place, not Yellowstone or something like that. Now, in practically any location that is seasonal, the ground temperature really doesn't change much with the seasons, below four feet or so. It's warm down there, relatively warm anyway, just about all the time. But you have some problems if you're going to try to extract that subterranean heat that's maybe four or eight feet down underneath the surface of the ground. And there are two basic problems with it. The first one is that it is low-grade heat. That means it's not very hot. It's only like 40 or 50 degrees or so, and that, of course, depends on where you are. And also, the soil is a very poor conductor of heat. Now, that last factor means that it requires a very large surface area to collect the ground heat. But it can be done. Now let, let's, let's kind of go through a little drill and see how you kind of do that. Here's a little cartoon I've prepared. Now there's our little greenhouse. Well, it's actually yellow, but it's a greenhouse. And there's the surface of the ground, okay? Now, it's cold outside and it's dark because it's nighttime and it's in the middle of the winter. And, and that's when you'd need this heat, wouldn't you? And also, it's probably about 10 degrees outside, I forgot to mention. It's really cold out there. Now, the other thing to consider, it's kind of warm down here underneath the ground. Say you're 4 feet or 6 feet or deeper than that. It's kind of warm down here. It might be as much as 50 degrees Fahrenheit down there. So the obvious question is, how do you get the warmth down here under the ground up to the greenhouse up there. Well, a simplistic uh, view of how you do that is, well, why don't we just bury some pipes in the ground where it's warm, and, and then what we do is we put a blower on this pipe over here, and we blow air through the pipe, and then the warm air comes up over here, and you just keep doing that, and everybody's happy. Well, there's a big problem with that. In that, remember when I said that ground is a very poor conductor of heat? What you're going to do, if you just have something simplistic like that with a little bit of pipe running through the ground, you're going to deplete that area very fast because the, the ground doesn't conduct heat very well. And you're going to, so what that means is to solve that problem, you're going to need a lot of pipe. And, and this, this next uh, picture is a better representation of what you're going to need. So you're going to need, there's our little greenhouse again, see that little tiny yellow thing. You're going to need a whole lot of piping to be able to extract ground heat to bring it back into that greenhouse because, again, the ground is a very poor conductor of heat. So what you've got to do is have a huge surface area from which to extract just a little bit of heat 
out of every square inch of soil that you've got that pipe running through. So you're going to need a lot of square inches. Now, you're probably going to need several hundred feet of pipe. Now, how many hundred feet? Now, I can't tell you. That depends on your, your uh, you know, application and where you're at and all that kind of stuff. And it's going to have to be buried 8 or 10 or 12 feet down under the soil. So that takes uh, a little bit of excavation work. And if you're talking like three or four or 500 feet or 500 yards of this stuff, you can see it's quite a trenching operation. And the other thing that you've got to do is you've got to run it out over a very large area. What that means is you can't just lap this pipe back and forth, say over an area that's, I don't know, 100 by 100, you know, 200 feet of pipe, because that area, like I said, the ground is a very poor conductor of heat. So you'll extract the heat out of the ground, that small uh, plot of ground, rather quickly and it won't replenish very well. So what you've got to do is run that heat out, I mean run the pipes out over a large area and then run it back maybe in a large uh, semicircle kind of a thing and keep the pipes far apart from each other so that you know they're extracting heat from a very very large surface area in your yard someplace. Well, okay, you can see from the uh, little uh, drawing that I made, the little cartoon that I made, that it is possible to do. You can do this. And I would invite you to uh, uh, take a look at the uh, fella in uh, Nebraska who has done this. And Nebraska gets very, very cold winters. So it is possible. It is, it is doable. But it's not it's even as simple as I have uh, shown. And, and do take a look at that video. And I'll put a link up here so you can go over there and take a look at it. But there's a couple things you got to remember. You have to have the real estate to do it, and you have to do a little more than just uh, have some air uh, pumping, you know, through the pipes and back up in your greenhouse. And you'll see the other things that he's done. Now, the one thing you got to remember too, if you do this, uh, you're not going to be able to heat your greenhouse. You're going to be able to keep it from freezing, because remember the when I said the earth was. 50 degrees. Now that depends on where you are. I think that's probably about the warmest you're going to see. 50 degrees. It might be a little warmer in some places. But that means that if you pump your, your cool air through your air ducts and it comes back, it isn't going to be any warmer than 50 degrees. And you're going to need a large volume of it. But that means that 50 degrees is, a, is going to keep your greenhouse from freezing probably. And uh, that'll work. That'll work. But anyway, uh, I can do this if I want to because I have the real estate and I have the means to do it, but to me that's just a lot of work and, and it's a lot of uh, once it's there it's permanent and things like that. And I, I don't know, there's just something about it that doesn't appeal to me and that's all there is to it. It doesn't appeal to me. If it appeals to you, do it because you know, it can be made to work and work very well. Uh, what I like is... Uh, water storage because water storage is very compact it's easy and you can heat the water with solar power during the day for use at night and I'm going to show you uh, what I'm doing here to, to get to that point in the next couple of videos